Uh, Mr. Secretary, it's a pleasure to receive you once again in Jerusalem. You've come to uh, Israel after uh, visiting uh, Egypt and Libya, uh, West Bank and Gaza. I uh, appreciate your ongoing efforts to secure peace, peace and stability, and security for uh, all of us in this all too turbulent region. The uh, impression that we all have, certainly in uh, the last few days and in the last few weeks, is of the tremendous uh, burst of violence that came out of Gaza. And Mr. Secretary, the the root cause of the violence that burst from Gaza is not Israel's um, occupation in Gaza for a simple reason. Israel doesn't occupy Gaza. Israel left Gaza to the very last centimeter, to the very last inch. We uprooted all the settlements and vacated all the settlers. So there is no Israeli occupation of Gaza. The root cause of uh, this summer's outburst of violence was um, Hamas's rocketing of Israeli cities. And these uh, rocket attacks often exploited UN neutrality, using UN facilities, and UN schools, as part of the Hamas machine of terror. And when rockets were discovered inside UN schools, uh, some UN officials handed them back to Hamas, that very same Hamas that was rocketing that very same time Israeli cities and Israeli civilians. And I ask a further question, Mr. Secretary. What is the root cause of Hamas's rocket fire on Israel? It's Hamas's opposition to Israel's very existence. Hamas uh, doesn't give a hoot for the 1967 lines. For them, Israel has no right to live in any border. Hamas rejects our very existence. They're committed to uh, killing every uh, Israeli and every Jew. <clears throat> you just have to read their charter. They say that very plainly. So Hamas is the enemies of all of us who seek peace. And real peace can only be achieved through bilateral negotiations with those who believe in peace. I believe that unilateral steps by the Palestinians at the United Nations will not advance peace. I think they'll do the very opposite. They'll uh, bring about a further deterioration in the situation, something none of us want. If the United Nations wants to support a genuine reconciliation, it must avoid any steps that could undermine peace. And I believe that, uh, Mr. Secretary, this is the goal that you share with me and with all those who want to see a different Middle East. We want to see a stable, peaceful, prosperous, and secure Middle East. And that can be achieved by having the parties who are committed to coexistence, who are committed to creating a new reality, work together as opposed to um, at cross purposes and unilaterally. I want to add a word about the uh, violence on the Temple Mount, because it's very clear what is causing that. It is not that Israel is in any way changing the status quo. We're not. I'm committed, and Israel is committed, to maintaining the status quo exactly as it's been for um, many decades. What we're seeing are Palestinian extremists who are instigating violence through incitement. The incitement is uh, spread by false and baseless rumors that uh, we are threatening the Muslim holy places. And nothing could be further from the truth. Israel scrupulously maintains the protection of the holy sites, the right to, uh, uh, of all religions to uh, worship in their uh, holy places, and will continue to do so, maintaining order, maintaining freedom of worship. That freedom was actually guaranteed only after Israel uh, reunified the city of Jerusalem in 1967. And in fact, Israel is the only country in the Middle East that fully, unstintingly, continuously, and constantly protects the right of uh, freedom, the freedom of worship, and the access to the holy sites of worship. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I think that it's important to keep these truths in mind as we work together to try to advance peace in what is increasingly a turbulent 
unstable, and unpeaceful region. We don't give up hope. We believe that hope should be grounded in reality. We have to have our feet on the ground as it is, but also look into the horizon and see how we can use the changing circumstances, the shifting uh, sands of the Middle East, the new awareness of many parties that there are new realities, new alliances to forge uh, a realistic and secure alliance for peace. Thank you, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How do you say that in Korean? How do you say happy, happy holiday in uh, Korea? Uh, that's uh, complicated. <laughs> I'll teach you later. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I'll try, I'll practice. Yeah, uh, it's a great uh, pleasure uh, to see you again uh, soon after our uh, very constructive meeting in uh, New York on the margins of uh, General Assembly. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, for welcoming me uh, despite this uh, very uh, pleasant uh, holiday seasons. I hope I'm not causing you any inconvenience uh, uh, during these holiday seasons. Uh, on my way uh, from the airport yesterday to my hotel, I saw so many Israeli uh, people enjoying this uh, holiday, uh, Sukkot holiday, and I congratulate and I wish you all the best. As you remember, I was uh, here uh, in July, uh, most, most recently. After a summer of uh, immense uh, suffering and destruction, I'm back uh, to strongly urge leaders and member states to find a way uh, to peace and contribute to the pressing issues of Gaza's reconstruction. The conflict left unprecedented level of uh, destruction, damage, and pain to thousands of uh, people, uh, civilians, living in the Gaza Strip. On the other side of the border, Israelis repeatedly lived with a constant uh, fear uh, for their own lives and safety and security, running for sh shelter at a moment's uh, notice. I consistently condemned <clears throat> the rockets fire from Hamas and other armed groups, the tunnels and breaches of the ceasefire. In the end, more than 2,001 Palestinians were killed together with the 70 Israelis and one foreign national. Uh, today, as we move uh, toward uh, uh, more sustainable uh, ceasefire and peace, I welcome uh, steps uh, taken by Israeli government to ease movement and restrictions in the West Bank and Gaza. The UN brokered a trilateral agreement on a temporary Gaza <coughs> reconstruction mechanism uh, has opened the door for much needed reconstruction, taking fully into account Israel's uh, legitimate uh, security concerns. I thank the Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, for his uh, support for this uh, mechanism. I urge both sides to implement this mechanism in good faith. <coughs> Large-scale reconstruction must, must start without uh, delay. But this is not enough uh, to break the cycle. If conditions in Gaza simply revert to where they were uh, before, this escalation, the clock will be set, reset for more instability, underdevelopment, and conflict. Economic revival, uh, which requires the predictable exit and entry of goods and people, can change the dynamics on the ground and ultimately enhance stability in Gaza, which in turn will improve Israel's uh, security. I'm confident that we can work together uh, so that this economic revival enhances, not harms, Israeli uh, security. Uh, turning to a subject I'm very sorry to have to raise yet again, I'm very concerned about 
the recent announcement of plans to advance settlement in East Jerusalem, which are in clear violation of international law. This does not send the right signals. And I urge the government of Israel uh, to reverse uh, these activities. As uh, you mentioned about this uh, holy site in Jerusalem, and I also said that this morning, I'm deeply concerned by repeated uh, provocations uh, at the holy site in Jerusalem. And these only inflame tension and must stop. After this uh, difficult summer for Palestinians and Israelis, both sides need to take steps to build trust and confidence. I'm also well aware that current uh, regional uh, turmoil continues to pose many challenges to Israel. In view of the recent incidents, we count on both, both sides to cooperate, to reduce tension, and prevent escalation along the blue line. I also want to once again thank the Israeli government for its good cooperation with the UNDOF. Uh, finally, uh, let me say that as the rounds of hostilities indicate, the status quo is not tenable. It is clear that the sides must quickly return to the negotiation table with the readiness to make the tough but necessary compromises. This is the time for leadership, Mr. Prime Minister, for the resumption of talks, for an end to polarization. There is not the moment to lose. The outlines of an agreement are clear. The ultimate destination is known to all. Unilateral action is no foundation for the future. The two-state two solution is the only way uh, to bring peace to both sides. Uh, Toda, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.